My name is Casey and this is a channel where I mainly like to chat about my love for all things fiber arts. So mainly knitting but also a bit of crochet, sewing, spinning, cross stitch, who knows what all. And I also like to chat about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We also love to raise chickens, gardens, animals, and we love spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. So I realized that lately, I really only share about my knitting and a lot of times when I say I've run out of time, that is accurate and there are still multiple whips that I realize I've never even shown or talked about. So I wanted to show you a few of those and some of them are knitting, some of them are not knitting related and sort of catch you up on some of my never before seen <laughs> projects. First of all, I will tell you a little bit about what I have been working on, and that is my test knit for Haley from Ozetta, and that is the Air Tee. So I was able to join my tee in the round, and I'm really pleased with how it's fitting so far. This is the size 5, and it is all scrunched up on my needles. I'm knitting this on size four. I was able to get stitch gauge, but my row gauge is a little bit off, which seems to be the case for me at all times. I can get stitch gauge, but my row gauge is always bigger. And that's okay with me because Haley always puts measurements in her pattern. So even if my row gauge is a little bit off, then I can try to at least meet the measurement and my stitch gauge still works out. So I am loving this. I'm using the Wool Dreamers new line of yarn, which is their sauna. And that is 50% cotton, 50% wool. And this is the notes color. So I really like it. I really think this is a super cute design feature on the back and I am about to pick up for my neckline. I like to go ahead and get that done because I find that the finished neckline does affect the fit of my tops. And once again, I am holding that in my mood living bag, Lofoten, Lofoten bag. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful leather. It comes in this color and the black color. And then you can pull this up out of the bag and close your drawstrings. So I like that, I like it a lot. Or if you just wanna have everything open, you can pull your drawstring open and just tuck it in. And it looks like just a regular wide mouth bag without a zipper. So I like this a lot. And if you like it, then make sure you're following me on Instagram because on June 10th, I will be giving one of these lovely bags away from Mood Living, who is going to very generously let the winner pick this whiskey color or the black color. So make sure you're following me over there. I'm also working on a test knit that I can't really share much about for another month or so, but it's going well and I am holding it in my Matter Root B bag, which I love. So those two knits have definitely been taking up a lot of my time, but another knit that I have actually cast on and had on my needles for, I wanna say almost a year, which is highly embarrassing because I've made zero progress on this particular knit. <laughs> and that is my Barbro blouse from Knitting for Olive. And the reason that I have made absolutely zero progress on it is because it is not in English. It is only published in Norwegian or Norsk and German. So I have 
both patterns. I bought it. I wanted it so badly that I bought it first in Norwegian and I just absolutely was having horrible, horrible luck with Google Translate. It was not able to translate those knitting terms. So I bought it in German as well and there were a lot of knitting terms that it couldn't translate in German either. But I did find that they seemed to be different terms. So some of the things that Google could not seem to translate from Norwegian, it was able to translate from German and vice versa. But I still had a lot of issues, especially with the knitting chart. And most knitting charts tend to be universal but there were a few things on the knitting charts that I had not seen before and I noticed that they were actually a little bit different from most universal charts that I've used from US patterns and that concerned me a little bit. So to the rescue came Inga from Knitting Traditions who is a very sweet friend of mine and she has very kindly helped me here and there with different sentences that just would not translate. She looked at the chart and translated knitting terms for me. So I owe her a huge debt of gratitude and I really, really, really appreciate her help because honestly I was at the point where I could do nothing further without her help. <laughs> so anyway, I had got to the point where I had cast on and I cast on for the size range of 119 centi centimeters to 127 centimeters. So I think that was, you know, in the upper 40 inch bust. You cast on a ton of stitches. I mean, I think I cast on 300 and something stitches, maybe 400. And then for three rows, you are just decreasing, decreasing, decreasing a lot. And it sort of gives it that flared out at the bottom. And then you are going to continue to, to decrease. So this is a bottom up pattern and it's an all over lace pattern. And I absolutely love it. It is written by Knitting for Olive and I am using some Knitting for Olive yarn, which is my absolute go-to yarn because it's got colors galore. The price is not too bad and it's 100% merino. So I absolutely love the Knitting for Olive. This is the Mushroom Rose or Champignon Rosa colorway. So I am very pleased with the color. I think it's gonna be really fun. But my absolute favorite thing about this is the back and the neck. I just really, really love it. And I'm considering making it short sleeve. And if I don't do short sleeve, I may do super tight um, sleeves that end like right above the elbow. So all the way down to the elbow and then end there. And I think that will be really nice. But I got this back out and I really want to make it. It's something that I think is extremely beautiful and special and is a bit of a dream knit for me. And it's not that it's difficult pattern-wise, it's that it's difficult language-wise. So I am still having a lot of trouble with some of the translation, but thankfully Inga has been there to hold my hand a bit. <laughs> and I do really appreciate that. So that's all the knitting I'm gonna chat about. I do have a project that is not knitting, but is actually crochet that I have had on my crochet hook, not my needles. I have had this on the go for probably six months. I remember when I cast on, I told my friends, I told Becky, <laughs> was like, oh, I'm gonna get this done quick because I'm gonna do one square a day and it'll be done in a few months. Fail. So this is for the Ariana cardigan, which is a pattern published by Barocco. And it is a pattern by Amy Christoffers. Is it Christopher's or Christoffers? I'm trying to remember the way it's spelled. Anyway, it's a beautiful granny square crochet cardigan. 
and then after you do all of the crochet squares you go and knit the borders so your button band your ribbing your hem it's all knitted which i love that fact i think knitted button bands finishing techniques are just beautiful i love it so i actually had some biche et bouche Le Lamb's Wool, which is a DK worsted weight yarn. And I had quite a few just single colorways because I was thinking about doing a pattern by Andrea Mowry that I end up not doing and I didn't know what colors I wanted to do. So I had all these random colors. And I will show you some of the ones I had. I'm not using all the colors I had. But these are the colors that I am using for my granny squares. And then once I make my granny squares and they are done, I will use this color to do the finishing, crocheting them all together, and then to do my knitted um, hems, button bands, collar, all of that. So I think that is going to look... I think that's going to look pretty fabulous together. How many granny squares do I have done, you may ask? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five. I've got about five, and that's it. And they're very enjoyable. I love making granny squares. This particular granny square, I would say, is extremely popular and... I crocheted before I knitted and there was this very sweet older lady who I spent a lot of time with and she taught me how to crochet and she taught me how to do granny squares. That was one of the first things I learned how to do and so I would just sit and make granny squares all the time but usually in a single color. Anyway, it was this granny square pattern and I do have it memorized so that part is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Anyway, I really love these granny squares. I think they're super, super cute, super fun, super old fashioned. And I think that I will go ahead and start piecing some of them together as I go just to make it a little bit easier. But this is a free pattern. So I think that's awesome. You can find it on Ravelry. I'll be sure and link it and someday I'll finish it. Someday. It would be lovely to have Ferran back. I don't know, no promises. You know what, I think that's all I'm gonna show right now for never before seen projects from Young Folk Knits headquarters. So I also want to do some sewing as I've been mentioning and a couple of things I want to do possibly before Ryan Beck, hopefully before Ryan Beck, is another hinterland dress. I have one in some black linen from Merchant Mills. Love it. It's got a full button placket all the way down. Scoop neck, short sleeves. I love that pattern. And I'm going to take that and make another hinterland dress, but I don't want to do a button placket this time. I just want it to be buttonless. And I don't know if I'm going to do short sleeves or sleeveless. But I am going to use this linen fabric, which I bought from Bat Blackbird Fabrics. And I actually bought enough to make a dress and a shirt, the Joni Top. And it didn't get here in time for me to sew the Joni Top as part of the preview sew. But <laughs> that's okay. I, I've got six meters here, which is a lot. So I think I will definitely make a hinterland dress out of this. And I may make it longer than I did my other one. And I think that I will also go ahead and make a long sleeve blouse that I can button up. And I love, absolutely love wearing linen button up tops, unbuttoned and casual and oversized over the tops of more fitted shirts and camisoles 
and so I definitely want one of those out of this fabric. It's lovely. The drape is incredible. It's like a washed or tumbled linen, and I love it. And the other thing that I'm going to sew is a pair of pants. So I have the Aeronaut pants. I have that that I got printed like a year or two ago, which is a pattern by Sew Liberated. And then I just got the Jones trousers printed, which is a zero waist pants pattern from Goldfinch Sewing Patterns. I forgot what her name is. I know it has Goldfinch in it. Anyway, I think those trousers look super fun. I've seen them on a lot of people during Me Made May. And Mega from Skeins of Dreams, she and I both really want to make them. So we have a goal of trying to make them within like a, the next month. We both got our patterns printed and I went through my fabric cabinet and I didn't really have the exact fabric that I have envisioned in my head and I'm having a lot of trouble finding the exact color that I want. Like I know the exact color and I know exactly what I want it to be. So because of that, nothing else is quite hitting the target, which has been a little bit frustrating. Anyway, hopefully I will be able to make a decision. There are three fabrics that I found that I'm trying to decide between. None of the three are exactly what I want. What I want is somewhere in the middle, but if I'm going to get this done, I need to go ahead and get some fabrics. I'm gonna make a decision, which is always painful. <laughs> so one other thing that I am going to start working on is totally yarn unrelated. <laughs> And that is a portrait of yours truly. I recently ordered this paint by numbers picture of me in a yarn crown. <laughs> and I am going to work on this in my spare time especially whenever my hand starts cramping up and it's too painful for me to knit. I think this will be a really nice activity. I have only ever done watercolors, so working with acrylic paint is not something that I'm used to, and that is why I decided to go with a paint by numbers. <laughs> I thought I can't screw it up too bad. And I think I'm gonna start this today. I think it'll be really fun. It came with all the colors that I need. This is what it will look like when it's finished. So this is gonna be the painted version and then I'll show you here my original picture. And I've got 24 colors. So you can choose how many colors you want. The more colors you choose, the more realistic it's gonna look and also the more expensive it's gonna be. <laughs> I chose 24 because I mean, I didn't want to get crazy here. And it came with paintbrushes. I do have some paintbrushes that I have gotten over the years from some of my favorite art supply stores, but they are dedicated watercolor paintbrushes. I don't want to use them in the acrylic and risk ruining them. They are pretty expensive, nice. <laughs> paintbrushes. I am going to get started on that and see what happens.
thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, even though I know it was a little bit different from my normal videos. If you did enjoy it, then let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leaving me a comment. And if you're not already, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any new videos. And it also helps my channel out so very much. Until we chat again, happy knitting, y'all.